Danielle just cut herself. Oh, no. I'm losing time, and I'm really unhappy about this. What? It's a big cut? Wow. Danielle's been pulled off. What's wrong? She has to get stitches? After losing 10 minutes to have her cut tended to... Danielle's been gone a long time. She's screwed. Danielle returns to the challenge. I think Kayla's gonna struggle. I think she's really puzzled. I would disagree. I think she's the one to watch. She's very confident. She deals well when she works on her own. Not a great team leader, but when she's in a solo situation, she performs very, very well. Where did my deal go? So what about deal? Oh, never mind. He'll excel in this because this is right in his comfort zone. But does he have the skill? I don't think so. Should I put olive oil on the salmon? No, just salt, just season it. You know, for me, I'm uncertain about Julie. Julie, don't mean to stress you out, but did you even put garlic in there? No. You think I should? Uh, yeah. Yeah, her saying that she's confident is a front. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? This is horrible. I can't grab onto it. Danielle's been motoring. She's catching up. It's quite the comeback. Danielle's fish is already wrapped and completely ready to go in the oven. 15 minutes. You have 15 minutes left. All your salmon better be in the oven. The single most difficult challenge is the cooking of that fish. Because you can't see it, you can't touch it. It's encased in pastry. Is it browning? Very little. Danielle Salmon Wellington is beautiful. You have two minutes left. Final two minutes. Yeah, I'll just leave it to the last 10 seconds. It's not enough time. How much time do we have? One minute. One minute. Come on, Julie. It's going to be hot, so be careful. Oh, baby, I'll burn my hands. Don't you worry. 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. Dale, wh what are you thinking? A puff pastry is not even cooked, and you're setting it on top of wet sauce? Ten, nine, eight, seven. Last five seconds, I go to squirt the sauce on top of the Wellington. Three, two, one, heads up! Good job. Way to, check Way to come back, Danielle. Danielle, you seem very confident. All things considered, <laughs> I'm ecstatic that this is what I managed to get out. Let's see if it tastes as good as it looks. Look at that. Salmon cooked to perfection. Crispy pastry. Just the right season for the vegetable. Sauce, nice compliment. I don't know how you manage to do something so beautiful like that in an hour. I've never made a wellington before, but I cook with fish a lot and I cook with pastry a lot, so. It's delicious. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. You say you've cooked a lot with fish? Yes. And a lot with pastry? Yes. Well, today you cooked a lot with passion, and it shows. Well done. I am trying to make sure that I have all of the ingredients I'm pretty sure I need. Oh, he's alive. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> White wine, fish stock, cream, good. Scallops, heavy cream. I'm walking out of the pantry, and I realize, as I see everybody's baskets, I forgot my eggs. The eggs are the critical component in a mousse. I can't make mousse if I don't have eggs. What's wrong with Jennifer? I need a minute. Without eggs, my mousse cannot bind together. This is the worst case scenario. Jennifer, what's going on? Oh, I'm just having a bit of a panic attack. I'll be OK. This is not a time now to give up hope. Nerves, pressure can get the best of anyone. So come on up. Thank you. Oh. That's it. There you go. Keep an eye on the clock. Absolutely. And put out the absolutely best dish you could possibly put together. OK. That's all you can ask of yourself. Thanks, Chef. It's 
going on, Michael? Oh, boy. Jennifer has forgotten her eggs. Whoa. Jennifer, she's probably going to end up with scallop soup. Now they're starting to add their egg whites to the mousse, which will not only help bind, but it also helps lighten the mousse. Now, Michael, Jennifer doesn't have any eggs. Is it possible to recover from that misstep? It's a tough one to recover from. So she's got to be able to find that sweet point and do the absolute best she can. I need to figure out some sort of way that I'm going to bind together this sea scallop mousse. So we are going to get creative today. I happen to have flour that I grabbed from the pantry and butter. So I'm going to make a root and just pray it dissolves enough so that the judges cannot taste flour in my sea scallop mousse. I'm truly being surprised with Jennifer. She had a total meltdown, and then she's still persevering. One minute! You have one minute left! Come on, one minute! A lobster's cooked. If they're not plating now, they're in trouble. They are, yeah. It's perfect. Yes. Moment of truth. Wow. So I check my mousse. It looks right to me. Hopefully it tastes OK. Jennifer. Please bring up your sea scallop mousse. At the beginning of this cook, you were in pieces. How are you feeling now? A lot better, and thank you for calming me down. I honestly didn't think I'd be able to recover from it. So you forgot your eggs? Yes, I did. What did you do to turn this around? I kind of made a bit of a roux. I tried to incorporate that into the scallops when I was whipping it. I think it was a very ingenious idea, but will it deliver the lighter texture? Jennifer, it did work. It is surprisingly light, moist. I really don't get the taste of any of that starchiness from the roux. It is a tad more dense than I would have liked, but the seasoning is spot on. The lobster is delicious. A lesson to everyone in resourcefulness and creativity, because this, as a replication, that's amazing. Thank you. Please go back to your station. I don't think Jennifer's a threat to me in this competition. I do believe, however, that some people don't take her as seriously as they should. She just doesn't give up. Thank you. The chocolate will take a little bit of time to melt. So in the meantime, I'm going to start my cake. The next step is a pistachio cake. And what I'm looking for is a light, fluffy Genoese sponge cake. I'm trying to get that cake in the oven, so I'm just sifting the flour, and then I can bring it all together. I've baked so many cakes. I know that this is something I could kind of do with my eyes closed, almost. Good job, Chrissy. Where do you get that in? 45 minutes. You only have 45 minutes left. Good job, Chrissy. I pulled my chocolate off the heat. This is the tricky part happening now. This is still too hot. I have to make sure it's at the proper temperature. Josh is checking the temperature on his chocolate now. I'm trying to get it to 88, 89. Now I'm putting handfuls of cold chocolate into it to bring that temperature down. So close. This is definitely the most precise and exact challenge we have ever given to home cooks. You're good. Yeah, we're good. Perfect. I'm good to go. All right. What they're going to do is take that tempered chocolate, pour it into those molds. All right, baby, come on. They shake them so there's an even coating of chocolate inside. Even professional chefs often make mistakes with the chocolate spheres. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, baby, come on, baby. I'm trying to coat every part of this ball. Come on. I'm shaking it like a maniac right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. It's good. Finally, I get it to a point where I like it. I sprint to the kitchen, put it in the fridge to cool off. Josh has finished his sphere. Let's go, Josh. Way to move, bud. 35 minutes. You're halfway through this challenge. <sighs> Her sphere's not working. I'm realizing that my chocolate has cooled down too much. It's not spreading inside the sphere. It's starting to set as I'm moving it around. Why? Chrissy is in deep water right now. All that's going through my head is, you're done. You're done. Oh, I've given up so much at this point that going home, oh, it would just be heartbreaking. It's OK, Chrissy. It's OK. It's OK, bud. 
but I have never given up in my life, and now is not the time. Shake it off, bud. Come on. I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to finish this challenge. Yes, Chrissy. Chrissy has pulled a balloon out as her second option for the chocolate sphere. At this point, man, I got to try anything. That's something we've seen in Chrissy over and over again. She does not give up. She will not throw the towel in. She wants that title bad. I know it's not going to be pretty, but I'm not going down without a fight. This is risky now. She's got to Very. try and get that balloon unstuck from the edge of the chocolate and then remove it from that sphere without Very. damaging it. There you go. Awesome, oh, Chrissy. Let's go, oh, Chrissy. Oh, I made a hole. There you go, Chrissy. If everything else on the plate is great, maybe, just maybe, I can get away with my lumpy, ugly sphere. One minute. Remember, everything has to be out in one minute. Come on, one oh, minute. On, Don't guys. forget the combo sauce. One minute. Guys, you make sure you get every component on the plate. OK, come on, come on, come on. Here goes Josh. He's motoring through it. Come on, paintbrush. The title is so close, they can taste it right now. Come on, guys. 10, 9, nine eight, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands off. Hot oh, damn, that was amazing. Wow. Really proud of you. Good job. Chrissy. Hello, chef. <laughs> you wear your emotions on your sleeve. I can see it. <laughs> A little bit. So, Chrissy. You did not hit the mark because this was a replication challenge. Yes. It's not perfect, but this was not easy what we asked you to do. Let's see what happens. There are a lot of opportunities within the sphere for you to really shine. Look at that, Chrissy. That's beautiful. <laughs> Very inviting. That cake is perfection. It is perfectly made. You hit all of those notes. Beautiful. Hey there, Chrissy. Hello, chef. Obviously, the chocolate dome, you got it done, not without its flaws. Yeah. The tempering wasn't quite right, but you never gave up. Nope. Let's try the sponge toffee. Has great structure. Taste is very good. In my opinion, textbook. Thank you, chef. Figs cut through the richness of the sweetness of this dessert. It certainly wasn't perfect on the outside, mm -mm. but it was pretty on the inside. Well done. Thank you, chef. This is messy. Cut these into chunks. I'm doing the fourth course, and I'm making a ravioli dopey, which is a double stuffed pasta. I need to get my skirt steak braising in a pressure cooker right away because I need to cook that down. Skirt steak takes time to cook. Why would you, with only an hour, create another obstacle for yourself? I'm already off the start feeling super overwhelmed with how much stuff I need to do. I'm, like, really worried about time. Come on. Thank you. Ah, that sucker needs to go as high as freaking possible. The yolk pasta is so stiff. Holy hell, I'm making a mess. Oh, that's you smoking. I was worried it was my pressure cooker. <laughs> I was panicked. What is going on here? She's having problems with oh, her man. pressure cooker. Why, why, why? Something's gone wrong. Oh, my god. My pressure cooker is spouting out everywhere, like all over the kitchen. This is such a mess. It's soaked everywhere. I'm in chaos. Everything that I touch is going wrong. Why did I do this to myself? <sighs> this is horrible. A bad choice just gotten worse. You okay, Taya? Yeah. I know my mate is okay, but I need to clean this up. I need to keep going. It's a nightmare. Don't lose focus, Taya. You got this. You got this. It's a total mess. So Taya has abandoned the pressure cooker, but Skirt Steak's best friend is a pressure cooker when you only have 60 minutes. Oh, it's nice and tender. Oh, I'm just going to chop it up then. You know, Taya's off to a bit of a bad start, but we've seen her pull things together many times before. So hopefully she'll be able to get things back on track. Stop, 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 stop. Okay. It's 
a little thick. It feels a little thick. Taya right now is cutting it really close. She may be cooking herself out of this competition. Stay calm. Stay calm. She just needs to bear in mind she has the fourth course. Maybe just three annulotti or even two per person with some other kind of garnish would be sufficient. Okay. Oh my god. I don't know if I'm going to make it. This is the dumbest thing I've ever done. I'm trying to stay strong. I'm not feeling very good. I'm trying to take breaths, but I'm breathing really heavily, and I'm realizing that I'm pushing myself really far, and I am just trying to plow through it because I don't want to not have anything on the plate. When I said I wanted to be pushed, I didn't think I would be pushed this far. Medic, I realize I'm going to pass out. I'm going to faint. I'm going to faint. And I immediately just fall to the ground. I'm no, oh, no. What is going on? Taya, are you OK? Concentrate on your breathing. Taya, she is just crumbling right now, and I'm just so worried for her, and I hope she's OK. Oh, my god. Taya, are you OK? Concentrate on your breathing. I'm down on the ground, and all I can think about is I want to finish this dish. I want to finish the cook. You're so close right now. Don't give up. I'm a fighter, and I never want to give up. Eventually, I'm able to stand and feeling better, and I just want to get in there and do the best I can. Welcome back, Taya. Oh, thank you. Taya's got the all clear from the medic, and she's back at her station. You do it, Taya. Thanks, me. It's not going to be what I wanted, but hopefully I'll get something. Taya has incredibly strong character. Muscling through and going back and cooking, it's absolutely incredible. So that was unfortunate. But you know, the pressure in this competition is so intense that I think at times it can really get into your head. And that's what happened with Taya. It's good to see that she's back now. She looks like she's strong and refocused. Um, so today I have a ravioli dopey, two raviolis together. One side has nadilla sausage with some braised skirt steak, and the other side has lemon ricotta. And then it was supposed to be with a reduction that got burnt, so I just did a quick beef reduction with that. Me. Hey. Tell us your thoughts on Taya's dish. Um, it was a small bite, uh, but I enjoyed it. The spiciness of the injuya was really nicely countered by the lemon ricotta and the broth that's currently in here. I got a deep, rich beef flavor. The presentation I actually really liked. I thought it was really beautiful. The ricotta was lovely. I found the sausage a little bit overpowering and a little bit salty for me. There's some valid points, but I also feel like there's some not so valid points. Christopher, how do you feel about having another pasta at this point of the menu? I think our menu could have been planned a little bit better. We have had a lot of starchy courses coming up to this point. Nay, hey, in retrospect, do you wish that you'd been a little more flexible, maybe? I think neither of us really wanted to relent. We just had that idea in our head. A protein really should have been a fourth course, for sure. From the total menu planning standpoint, I feel like we let down what our original concept was. However, I think the fact that there's even a dish in front of us is a testament to her strength as a cook and her never give up attitude. And that's incredibly admirable. I enjoyed it. Thank you. I have to agree with Andrew. I think the dish itself is really strong. The pasta is perfectly rolled out. The broth, I think it's rich and intense, maybe a bit too salty. But overall, there's nothing wrong with this dish. Thank you. Taya, you know, I really like the dish. And I'm not overcompensating because what happened. I think that in terms of presentation for a tasting menu, it's probably the most appropriate. It's pretty, it's simple, and it gets to the point. The fill, unfortunately, let you down a bit. I would not have picked skirt steak because it's very tough, it's very dry. I tell you, it's a nice little dish. I think you could have had a little bit more of that braised beef in the bottom of that broth. Yeah. It came down to time and the challenges that you faced today. Thank you. Miranda's batter looks very silky and smooth. Unfortunately for Alice, her batter looks kind of lumpy, almost like scrambled egg. What's probably happened there is she has added her egg yolks to her base flour and butter mixture when it was still too hot, and the egg yolks have started to cook. In essence, scrambling. Miranda is actually starting to whip her egg whites, I believe, by hand. Look, getting a little bit of volume. I've whipped a lot of egg whites in my day. 
I know that I have to whip it to a medium stiff peak. Nice job, Miranda. Good job, looks great. Savory souffles are even harder to make than sweet souffles. Especially a cheese souffle for the simple reason cheese is very dense and heavy. And that's why this is ultra tricky. It's just not whipping. Alice is trying to whip her whites and they are not stiffening up. These souffles are going to take 12 to 15 minutes in order to achieve that beautiful height and that beautiful rise that we're looking for. Oh my god, it's not whipping. I don't know what happened, but I see yolk in my egg whites. Did you get an egg yolk in there? I did. Her whites are contaminated. She has egg yolks in her whites. Oh. Look, look, look. Miranda's souffle is going in the oven. Whip it by hand. Turn it off and whip it by hand. Alice got yolk in her egg white. If I was in that position, I would really want someone to come help me. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Miranda's helping her. Miranda's looking to help her. I mean, this is it's classic. Get violent. One of these home cooks is going home and Miranda is helping Alice. And she only has three minutes to get that souffle in the oven or Actually, it's over. Actually, those whites are stiffening up much better than I thought. My goodness. You have to admire both of these home cooks, you know. Miranda, on one hand, is trying to help Alice, and Alice refuses to throw the towel in. Second chances do not come that easily, and I came back here to cook. I am not going to give up. Once you take it out of the oven, within minutes, if not seconds, it will start to deflate. Please, souffle. Please rise. The thing with souffles is you don't know if you did it right till the very end. Alice with souffles. It can take a second, but it, it doesn't matter because in one second it won't be, and in the next second you have beautiful puffy goodness. Okay? Thank you, Miranda. Tell that souffle to rise. One minute, you have one minute left. One minute. My souffle actually rose. Let's go, Alice. You can do this. Wow. There you go, Alice. There you go. Against all odds, Alice, look what you did. Is that better than you thought? <laughs> it could have been better, I think. Not perfect, but it rose. Yeah. Amazing. I don't know how you pulled this off. The flavor is quite nice. It's not perfect. What is perfect, though, is you did not give up. I did not make a mistake by asking you back. Thank you, Chef. Ready to go, Alice. I didn't give up. And even when worse came to worse, I still finished all my dishes. Starting pastry cream. So you're looking for milk? Look at about two cups. No, it's one in one. I've made pastry cream a thousand times. I'll just. Lynn. Lynn. Listen to me. Should be three eggs for this. Cody, don't worry, because I always put sugar in here, and I always put sugar in there. <gasps> Cody, don't worry. Lynn, please. It just goes quicker like this. Listen to me, woman. This is my jam. I know pastry cream. You have to trust me on that one. In a pastry cream, you have to whip up your egg yolks with the sugar, scald your milk and cream, and slowly cook it out. A lot of things that can go wrong. Lynn, please, yeah. if there's one time in your life that I really need you to listen to me, please pass the cream. We'll be fine. I always strain my pastry cream before I put my eggs in, and Cody always does it after. Please, please, we're cooking our eggs right now. We have to pass it again. But for the sake of teamwork, I do it. Cody's way. Thank you. The biggest surprise with Lynn is that she's actually listening to what I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Woo! She's taking a hard fall. Oh, my knee. Wow. She's clearly in pain. Come on, Lynn. You got this. You got this, darling. 
Okay, you're gonna have to talk to okay, me because. Okay, make one sandwich. Yeah, and then you're gonna lay it across, cut it in three, and get them on the plate, yeah? Cody steps up to the plate and encourages me that I'm doing well. Lynn, you're doing a great job. You're doing a great job, okay? He's giving me the fuel to make me go forward and to forget all about the pain. Keep it going, you got this. You got this. Let's go! Ten! Nine! This thing is so brutal. Seven, Lynn, we got six, this! Good, good, good. Five, go, go. Four, the jam, David. Three, two, one! Hands up! Oh my god, I love you, woman! Lynn and Cody, please bring up your tea tray. Overall, great presentation. Lynn. Yes, Chef. You literally limped to the finish line. What happened? I injured my knee during my service in the military. I've had 11 surgeries, two knee replacement surgeries, and I fell and I hit my leg pretty hard. Well, you're really a trooper to pull it through. I don't give up. Cody. Yes, Chef. Do you think the accident affected Lynn's performance at all? There's no way that I could have possibly asked more from my partner. Well, well, let me try a profit a roll. When I cut into this, I want to see it full of that delicious whipped cream. Pretty spectacular. Not bad for a guy with shaky hands. <laughs> the shoe pastry, beautiful. Thank you, chef. A little crispness to it, light, fluffy, whipped cream. Likewise, a little bit of a vanilla hit. Really well done on the profit of rolls. Thank you, chef. I'm gonna try the tart. You got a good balance of sweet and acidity there. This cream is nice and smooth, hint of vanilla, balance of raspberry. It's very, very good. It looks amazing. Thank you, Chef. Well, coronation chicken sandwich, one of the classics. I'm hoping when I try this, I'm gonna taste all the layers. It's delicious. There's celery in here, there's curry, a little bit of mayonnaise, there's some red grape in here as well. The curry pops out right in the finish. Very impressive. Shows you what good teamwork can do, right? Absolutely, yes, Chef. Chef. Good job. What I've learned about Cody is that I had misjudged him from the start. I think we saw the real Cody come out today. 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes left. You need to be filling your raviolo by now, and those need to be moving. <sighs> oh, no, Eric. Do it in your hand, Eric. Eric's struggling in separating his eggs. Now he's down to his last egg. He only has one egg, so he cannot afford to make a mistake. The home cooks are fighting for their lives in the first MasterChef Canada pressure test. You need to be filling your raviolo by now. And Eric needs one perfectly separated egg yolk for his pasta filling. Drain the whites through your fingers. Shit. But so far, he's managed to drop them all. Now, he must try and salvage his last intact yolk from his container of discarded shells. Oh, no, it's saved. It's not broken. Oh, yes. There you go, Eric. Beautiful, Eric. Oh, he got it, he got it, he got it. Yeah, he got it, he got, got it. Got one. Have a nice bath. Two minutes. You have two minutes left. Your raviolo should be in the water cooking by now. You should be finishing off your sauce and getting ready to plate. If they overcook the noodle, that means the egg inside will be solid. And that defeats the entire purpose of this dish, because the wow factor lies in that egg being very liquidy. Oh, my god. I wonder how many have actually made a crispy fried sage leaf. 10, 9, wipe the plate. 7, wipe six, the plate. 5, come on. 4, 3, 2, one! Heads up! up. Heads up! I can feel that's good pasta. I mean, just with a knife. It's everything that needs to be in this dish here. 
Ingredient-wise, yes, chef. Where's the Parmesan cheese? With the appetizers all served, both teams are now scrambling to make up for lost time on their entrees. Guys, we have one hour to pump this out. We gotta get on it. Get that meat cooking, guys. So far, we haven't really had time to think about the second course because we've been just working hard to get the first one out. White potatoes to thicken, right? I don't think we have white. Dice up some sweet potatoes. Again, we're following Andre's input. I'm doing the dumplings right now. So we're making stewed beef and dumpling, but we're way behind. Alyssa's just starting to cut this tenderloin, and I'm just starting to get the flour needed for these dumplings. Stew it up, Tony. Hey, you guys, focus. Who's on chicken? I'm on chicken. Okay. I got it. Your entree is a jerk chicken with beans and salsa. I need you to start prepping dragon fruit and pineapple for the salsa. OK. After like the stressful end to the appetizer service, we need to work quicker, and we need to make sure we have enough. OK, 15, right? I really just wanted one person to own the chicken. And Josh is awesome. He's right? kind of just like head down, doing his thing. Oh, I'm so happy I have Josh on my team. The oh, chicken is in there. Okay. It is in there. Can you start Watch taking? Those? Can you start grilling some? I am on the chicken. Don't worry about the chicken. It's my only job is to cook this chicken. All I keep thinking is don't ruin this lovely bride's wedding. Oh, Josh. Oh, sh Josh just dropped an entire tray of chicken. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh, Josh. It's OK, bud. It's OK. Do we have extra chicken? Uh, there are extra chickens. I'm panicking. I'm like, do we have enough chicken? Can we count? I mean, one, eight, two, eight, three, eight, four, eight, five, eight, six. Hundred. I'm not. I'm, I count. Uh, Josh, I only counted 115. Okay, so I got those ones right there. 115. 16, so we should be good. 17, 18, 19, 21. Colin, 22. how many? 122, if my count's right. That's the exact amount. I know. Oh my God, you guys, we have the exact amount. The blue team. They still got to grill all those chickens, make sure they're cooked, and there's only salsa to do 30 portions. We still got to go. 30 minutes. You only have 30 minutes left. There are also problems in the other kitchen where the red team is struggling with their beef stew. Andre, it has no flavor at all, none whatsoever. Black pepper, salt, onion powder, get those in. I know my team wants me to be at five places at one time, but I can't right now. I mean, nobody else can do the dumplings. Do what you got to do, man. We, we, honestly, we just got to pump out things now. Jenny, yeah? can you season this for me? I toss in onion, garlic, every spice I can find. And I say, please, God. <laughs> Cook this stew and make it taste good. The red team, they got three people around a pot I, and one person making the dumpling. That is not good time management. Let me grab some salt, OK? Yeah. You only have 10 more minutes left. 10 minutes. Service will be coming to pick up. We're not going to get this done. Keep going. Josh, what are you doing right now? Just making more jerk sauce. we got to move a little faster. I'm getting very worried. I think both teams right now are starting to slip. This is someone's wedding night. Without our help, they will never get there. All right, Tony, get a cover, get a cover, get a cover on that. It's tasting better, Tony. Tasting better, yeah? It's great. OK, I want you to take some vegetables. Beautiful banana peppers here. Chef Claudio comes up next to me, and he's like a samurai with his swords, chopping all these vegetables. Have you counted the chicken? Yes, Chef. Make sure every single piece is the same, all right? Yes, for sure, Chef. OK, here you go, Chef. Here you go, Chef. Let's go. Thank you very much. It's a dream come true to be working with these guys. You know what I mean? They're great chefs. It's exhilarating. All right, who's faster at chopping pineapple? Oh. The answer is me. <laughs> Chef Michael's boosting morale. We're on a high. Yes. All right, come on. The service is coming. Quick, come on. Let's play. Finish strong. Thank you. Is there any stew that is ready? Yes, there's stew. OK, the plates are going out. We have a stew that I can't believe we made in 40 minutes. And it's not the prettiest, but it still tastes great. Look closely at this example. This cut must be butchered precisely, cooked to a well-seared medium rare, and perfectly seasoned with rosemary and garlic. Tony, Rogine, it's time to show us what you've got. Everything that you need for this challenge is at your stations, including your boning knife. And we're giving you 22 minutes. You praying right now, Tony? No, I'm trying to figure out how much is 22. <laughs> Tony, Rogine, are you ready? Yes, Chef! Your time starts now. All right, guys. There you go. 
Every great chef has to be able to know how to French a rack of lamb. It is an essential skill that we all need to master in order to call ourselves a chef. I've done a few rack of lambs before, so feeling really confident right now. I have cooked the rack of lamb before, but try to clean it and cook it in 20 minutes. It's torture. This is going to be really tough, man. Yeah. Uh, medic. Oh, He's got his finger already. No. Just right there, just, just a little pinch. The excitement of 22 minutes, of course, I stabbed myself in my hand. I like what I'm seeing. He's using his elbow right now. Go ahead. Nothing's stopping Tony. You have to do what you have to do, right? I've never, never given up anything in my life. Never. They only got two hands. If I cut the other one, I'm in trouble. OK, Tony, come on. It sounds like somebody's just scraping their nails down a chalkboard at Tony's station. Tony's basically tearing the meat off the bone, and that can be dangerous. Medic. Tony has taken another wound. Tony cut himself again. He's cut my thumb. He cut myself twice. I'm wasting more time. And now I'm panicking. Oh, carefully there, Tony. He can't spare any time here. And looking between him and Regine, he's already behind. Can't give up now. I'm not going to go down without a fight. You're still in this, Tony. You're still in this. 12 minutes! 12 minutes! The meat has to be in the pen now! At 12 minutes! Nice. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's and away go. we go. Now we're cooking. Finally, the pan's hot enough. I don't know who's going to get this now. Oh, God. At first, I thought Regine had it. But then Tony kind of catches up. All of a sudden, it's anyone's game. My dream is to become the oldest master chef in Canada. I think it'll be awesome. But first, I have to get this white apron. I only got one job to do is make sure that the land is cooking perfect. And that's, that's all I'm focusing on right now, nothing else. Last minute, one more minute left, last minute. There you go, garnish is ready. I'm feeling really frantic because I checked my temperature and the lamb is not medium rare yet. I have to wait till the very last second till I have to plate so that I can make sure this lamb goes medium rare. Yeah, boy, oh boy. All three rounds, right down to the last split second. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! Wow. Wow. My hand is burning, my fingers are cut, but I feel good. <laughs> just on the outside, couldn't have asked for anything more perfect. Uh, so now it's just about the inside. Tony, the first thing I'm going to do is cut your lamb rack right through the center and check the doneness. We're looking for a perfect medium rare cook, a deep rosy red towards the center, and it'll fade out to a more cooked doneness as it reaches the outer perimeter of the lamb. Let's open the Christmas present. That is very, very close to a medium rare. I would say it's just seconds to the slightly more done than a medium rare. The Frenching is quite good. Thank you. You could have made the bones a little bit cleaner because you didn't remove some of the sinew, so you don't get that nice color. Really wonderful job caramelizing that meat. Perfect sear. So, Tony, you're missing a very important ingredient. Salt. No. It just needs to be seasoned more liberally. However, such a great lamb rack. Your performance is proof that we made the right decision bringing you back. Thank you. I don't know if I could have done a better job in 22 minutes. Five minutes left. In five minutes, the MasterChef Canada kitchen will be closed. I go to my ice cream machine, and it's nowhere near being frozen. How's it looking, Trev? Trevor is starting to panic because his ice cream is not setting. He's not going to have enough time to set it. If I don't nail this ice cream, I just have a chocolate puddle on a plate. His master chef journey could end right now. Oh, God. He's only got four minutes left. My only option is liquid nitrogen. It's a crazy gamble. I've never worked with it before. Let's give it a shot. Trevor is really thinking like a chef and adapting to the situation. Using liquid nitrogen is always risky, but it's either try it or serve as soup. Brilliant! 
that ice cream and that liquid nitrogen. It's got to come out right about now, otherwise it will be like a rock. One problem turns into another. The mold is so frozen that it's actually rock solid. I can't get the ice cream out of the mold, but I got to keep pushing hard to get this dessert out. So Trevor's just come back from the equipment room with a torch. So now he's heating the bottom of that silicone mold, which should release the ice cream. He is not giving up. There he goes, coming out. Yay! Wow, he's doing it. Trevor, please describe your dessert. What you have in front of you is a chocolate mint gelato with a Dutch cocoa pizzelli cone and a creme fraiche whip. Let's try this dessert. You know, this dish really resonates with me. The ice cream is obviously a bit hard. It's a bit too frozen. That's a common mistake when you're working with liquid nitrogen. However, having said that, the flavor that you have is divine. Great balance of chocolate and mint, really playful. I love it. Thank you very much. Great flavors, that big, bold, bitter chocolate with fresh, poppy mint, which is a perfect combination. You have the balance just right. In the ice cream, I taste a bit of salt, and that's a very good idea. That little bit of salt brings out that chocolate even better. I like it. I like it very much. Thank you, Chef Alan. So today I'm making a chocolate mousse nanamo tart. I never like doing desserts. I never like baking, so I'm definitely stressing. 30 minutes. You have 30 minutes left. Eric, slow down. The judges told me to slow down, but I just think it's more efficient to sprint there. Like, I'm, I'm wasting time. I'm walking. Close that blast chiller, Eric. Is someone burning <laughs> something? Oh my god, somebody's station is smoking. What the hell is burning? My station. Oh my god. It's a caramel. I'm definitely screwed. Oh, five minutes left. You have five minutes to put together a beautiful dessert for us, or it will be your last five minutes in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. He is actually burnt. I think it's his caramel again. He's burnt it twice. He's, He's almost in tears. Walk me through it. What is it? The top is supposed to represent like the custard of the Nanaimo bar. It's flavored the same as the vanilla and icy sugar. The inside's filled with uh, chocolate mousse. So you made caramel not once, not twice, three times. Yeah, chef. Uh, I made a quick caramel at the end just to candy my nuts. Did you have time to taste it? No, Chef. I want you to tell me if you recovered from that mistake. Tastes pretty good. I think you're right. Mistakes aren't always a bad thing. Thank you, Chef. I'm the only home cook who's been in every pressure test. Then I cook scotch eggs all the time. I have this challenge in the bag. I'm just going to stay focused and not panic, keep calm, <laughs> and hopefully do my best. A scotch egg, it's a lot more difficult than it might seem. You need to cook that egg so it is just hard cooked. Not overcooked and rubbery, but cooked through completely. <gasps> Boiled my egg for 10 minutes, right into an ice bath. The egg's supposed to be fully cooked, hard boiled, but not overcooked, so you don't get that green ring. Luckily for me, back home, I make scotch eggs all the time. Trevor pulled his egg out of the boiling water at 10 minutes. Some might argue that that's a little bit too early. Everybody wants to pull their egg at the same time. Nobody wants to be the person with the underdone egg. Certainly nobody wants to be the person with the overdone egg. The way that I'm going to do my hard boiled egg is going to take roughly 12 to 13 minutes. I know they've all taken them out too early. Take your time, Dan. Some people are struggling with getting that perfect sausage crust around that egg. It's not sticking. I'm getting parts that are coming off of it that I completely have to re-flatten some and do it again. Calm down. Why are my hands freezing up? I can't move them. 
I don't know what's wrong. I've never had that. Stress, Taya. Breathe. Breathe deep. My brain is telling my hand to close, and it won't close. Medic, I don't know what's wrong with my hands, but they're seizing. <laughs> oh my goodness, Taya's nerves are getting the better of her. It just happened after I put my hands in the ice, and now they're, they're like cramping up. No, I've never had this happen before. Five minutes, you have five minutes left. My anxiety level now is at an all time high. Why are my hands freezing up? But she's determined to keep cooking. I am using the palms of my hands, and I'm trying to pack it as best as I can without the use of my fingers. Just calm down, just calm down, Tara. How are you feeling? I'm feeling really upset right now because I thought I would kill this one, and I don't know what happened. My hands just seized up. Despite all that difficulty, you got it on the plate. Crisp, sounds great to me already. How long did you cook your egg for? 10 minutes. The egg is slightly under. But look at the sausage. It's perfectly ground. It's even. The sausage surrounding that egg is absolutely delicious. This is really awesome. I am hoping and praying that my flavors are enough to get me up to the gallery. All right, blue team, listen up. Ordering two lamb, two sea bream. Two lamb, two sea bream. Two, two more sea bream, that's nine in total. Eugene, that's nine total. This is the first time I've ever cooked sea bream. This is crazy. Let me see that fish. Overcooked? Overcooked. So Eugene, you just wasted five pieces of fish. I'm sorry, chef. Right now, all we have is one out of the five orders for the first table. It feels like we're starting the challenge over again now. Nadia, here comes lamb down. Eat it straight. Let me get Red team, your fish is going to get cold while you're waiting yes, for your lamb to be cooked, Lentils right? Lentils are coming down right now. If you guys give me cold food in the past, it's going to go right back to you. Move a plate. Move a plate. Let's go. Come on. The orders are coming in. Five sea bream. It's absolutely chaotic. Red team, I need that lamb yesterday. The fish has already gone out. Very hungry. When are you going to give me five bream and one lamb? As soon as we can get the, the bream from over there. Eugene, how many clams are in this pan? I have four on no. the pan. No, Eugene, listen to what I'm saying before you answer. How many is in this pan? How many orders? It's for five. OK. Becky, are you in charge now? Seems like it. Seems like it, right? Looks like it. I'm having a hard time balancing all of these different things. I can't pay attention to Chef Claudio, and I can't pay attention to the rest of my team. Eugene, we yeah. have two orders of clam and only one fish. OK, four fish are about to come. Eugene, you got that? Kagan, yeah, take control. Becky, do you want to take charge? Do you need me to? Eugene listens to you, and you're more composed. Eugene, I'm in charge now. I'm excited to be team captain. I'm going to whip these boys into shape. Thank you, Becky. The best chance we have of winning is with Becky at the helm. Tegan, where's the lamb at? Two minutes on the lamb. Get the plate ready. Are the lentils done? Yes. Two sea bream right here, and then Tegan, I'm going to get the fish. Tegan, this cooked more. The key to running a professional kitchen is yelling. <laughs> Two lamb. Nice looking lambs, Becky. Thank you. How long in the bream? The bream is about two minutes away. Becky's team captain, and it's going much smoother. I need those two breams fast. Yep. Enjoy this? Michael. Finally. Wow. All right, Becky, you're doing a great job. Thank your, you. Your team is catching up now. That was a smart move by relinquishing control of your team and giving it to Becky. It was the right thing to do. I'm like, hashtag team Becky right now. Just like, yes, you go, girl, yes. Two lamb, Becky, and you are clear. No, Eugene, tops up. It feels amazing to be in a professional environment. Beautiful, guys. It feels really natural. I'm beyond proud right now. It's amazing. Thank you, chef. You have to make the perfect sponge batter. It has to cook evenly. You need to get it cooled down before you can start building the cake. A lot is involved in this. If you screw up one element in this cake, you are done. One of them, at least one, is going home today. I'm not going home. 
I'm most worried about the sponge cake, because that needs to be done right, and it needs to go in the oven basically immediately. Kagan, Freddy has his cake batter in the oven. I am so shocked. I'm doing this for my boyfriend. He puts up with my messiness, and he loves me for it. These cakes are done. I'm the first to take them out of the oven, and I'm the first to put them into the blast chiller. This time I'll walk so I don't drop these puppies. You gotta move a little faster, Reem. You gotta move a little faster. Now, Reem is working incredibly slow. I don't think she really grasps what's at stake here. Yeah, it's like it's painful to watch when things are slow. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. What is happening in your oven? Uh... It doesn't look like it's rising. It's not rising because I opened happened? the oven to check on it. Open and the it oven. Down. Oh, no. I think I opened it too early. Stay confident. You've got what it takes. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. I'm very worried because my cake could be undercooked, but at the same time, I get a wake up call. Out of nowhere, I get this superpower and I start doing things really fast. We have never seen Reem hustle quite like this before. I don't want to disappoint my family, and I'm here to win. You're halfway through this challenge. I feel really good about baking right now. I'm calm, I'm in my zone. I feel like I have a good handle on things right now. I realize that I'm in a good spot, and I should start getting my cake ready to assemble. My cake tastes like stale bread. I forgot the sugar in the cake. He didn't put sugar in his cake. Oh. An unsweetened cake is not good. Keep going, Kagan. Take a breath. I'm going to soak it in cream and sugar and throw it in the oven to try to toughen it up. Not a bad idea, right? I can make a simple syrup and try to infuse some of that into the cake itself. Like he's soaking his he's cakes? He's soaking his cakes. He's just ruining it. <laughs> Oh, he just dropped. He just dropped. Right now, I'm not handling the pressure well, and I am no longer going to be able to make a four-layer cake. But I'm not ready to go home. I never thought I would be here. It's a dream come true. I have three layers left. Buttercream is sweet. The ganache is sweet. Let's make something tasty for the judges. I'm glad to see that you're uh, pushing on. Tell me what happened. I didn't put any sugar in my cake. How have you tried to remedy I this? I tried issue? to add a little sugar to the cake. As a sugar syrup? It's not a bad idea. Well, as long as it's not too wet, it could hold together. Is the cake itself nice and cold? Because your pastry cream is starting to soften already. This cake is too hot, so I put him in the chiller. My cake just crumbled into a bunch of chunks. Those two sponge cakes are so wet with syrup, it just started to fall apart. I kind of feel like throwing in the towel. Just don't give up. Please, don't give up. She's right. I didn't come here to give up. I have one layer of cake left, but I feel pretty confident I'm going to be able to get the flavors right on this cake. You know, flavor is king. It could save me. I get up to my fourth layer, and I'm thinking, I still have this on my, my decorating table here. I need to get this on my plating dish. It's too heavy. Like, this thing is just going to crumble. This is so uncomfortable to watch. Oh, my lord. Yeah! <laughs> Good job, wow. Mikey. Incredible. Oh, my god. It worked. Look at this. The last one to get the cake in is the first one to bring the cake to the front. coming up. Wow. What a turn of events. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 6 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and time. Kagan. 
Chef Claudio. I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm impressed that you got to this point because I thought for a moment there you were gonna throw the towel in and just give up. What do we call this? We call this humble pie? <laughs> I called it uh, budget cake. Budget cake. Yeah, can't all afford layers. I've gotta tell you, in terms of flavor, this is actually the tastiest cake I've had here. I mean it. What? <laughs> it's balanced. I like the fact that there's not a lot of sugar in the cake because there's already a lot of sweetness happening on top of it. It's actually very balanced. You might be onto something. Thank you.